Hey guys, Adam here. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different today, and you can tell because I started with uh, an impromptu video that I made the other morning with wild hair. <laughs> so sometimes I have wild, oh, wild old man hair, um, and but really straight from the heart. And so how that video came into being, it was a it was a morning. It was well, it was just yesterday. It was Sunday. It was a Saturday morning, and my wife and kid, crucially, were still asleep. So I didn't want to wake people. So I had that sort of conspiratorial harp thing where it's like, I'm not really supposed to be playing. And I, and, and I came across, I mean, I think the, 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 the melodies that we stumble upon are some of the most important melodies. They may be really close to who we are. In, in this case, I, I think um, Going Down South was a song I recorded in 2010 on an A harp. This is a C harp that I'm using and that I used the other day. This particular little riff just sort of came to me. I realize it came from that going down south kind of group of licks. And what it did was it, I didn't quite have, I, I had a feeling in me, a sound in me. And, and I know that many of you have this sort of relationship with the harmonica. At, at its most primal, it's what the playing is all about. And it's not about chords, it's not about 12-bar blues. What's one of the nice things about this sort of blues, this sort of one-chord groove blues? What's nice about it is that it's just really intuitive. And so what I want to try to do is help you, if you I want you to go back and re-watch that opening sequence more than once and hear how I was trying to get it right. I was listening to different variations. I was coming up, there's a zillion different variations of this this thing, and I was trying to come up with the best ones, with the ones that felt right, most right, the ones that were sort of balanced. I think painters must do this all the time. They put, you know, orange next to blue, and it's like, what, like what's the right kind of orange, and how thick? And, it, and at a certain point, you get it, it feels right to you, and that's what it was like to me. So I, I started with basically the blue third, just that little motif, three, two, three, two, and the three is not. It's it's a tongued blue third, so it's the three hole draw pulled down a little bit, just that crucial little bit that blues harmonica players do. Now, just that little bit implies something else, right? If you go down and try to counterpoise it, counterpose it with. Or, or fuse it with, balance it with some bent two-hole draw lick. So the bent two draw would be, of course, a whole step bend, not a half step bend. And the key thing about this series of licks is figuring out, is, is paying attention to the really small differences. The difference between that, right? Do 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 and can you hear the difference between the two? They're very different. How about that versus And of course what I'm doing, if you're a if you're a novice, this may seem like how's he getting that sound? I'm I'm actually bending the notes slightly and then I'm using my tongue kind of tapping the roof of my mouth to articulate it. So this is all lip pursing. Although if you were to go back and listen, I don't know if I'll include, the, I'll try, I'll, now that I've said something, I'll include this portion at the very end of that sample. Things kind of fell apart a little because I was trying to do the whole thing tongue block. And I'm not a very good tongue blocker when I bend. Nah, so not, not really my style. All right, so what can we do here? Well, the first thing is we could start with the blue third as the opening lick and then the two draw whole step bend as the second lick, or you can reverse them, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna start with three draw and then two draw. Now, I love that change that I did. I kind of went back and touched on the three draw at the end of that lick. Now, notice that I went 
I didn't go. I didn't tongue that last three draw, right? These are subtle differences, but I wanted the flow of. I tongued at that the three draw at the very end, but I didn't go. Do you hear the difference? Subtle differences, and they, these make a real difference. The key thing is, when you're first versioning through them, when you're cycling through them, you're not gonna, you may make some mistakes. You may do some things that feel a little off. Pay attention to them, and I, I'm gonna encourage you to do exactly what I did in this case, which is, when a feeling comes on you, and you think you've got a lick that is sort of haunting you, as this one did. Maybe I'll call this video something like haunted by the blues or haunted by a lick. Um, Cause that's sort of what it was. It wasn't haunted. It was like, I suddenly felt this, heard this. Actually, I think I played it and it was like, oh, that sounds good, right? You should have moments like this. Never let, and I've said this more than once, never let me as a teacher get in the way of that primal play, that primal sense of like, this feels good to do, right? different so let's let's see if I can get the one that sounds the best as a kind of baseline riff let me try a few different things better I took a little pause I love that one that one feels just right it sort of rolls right off the tongue quite as good. What did I do? Too complicated. Too complicated. Let's go. Whenever you get too complicated, go right back to the beginning. Right back home. figured out what's the right like exactly the right phrasing of that second lick to, to 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 sort of balance out the first lick that's what I'm trying to figure out now So that way, if I wanted to get a little busier, then I do that. And so there I went up to the four blow. Can you hear that? But again, always important to go right back to, to bass line. play exactly the same thing but I'm gonna punch up the volume and intensity I'm gonna add maybe a few coughs so once you've figured out what works well there I added a little bit of four four draw <laughs> there we go
Now there, isn't that a cool little move? Fifth belt, fifth degree black belt. So I thought I would take the whole step in and just release it one half step. Wow. You know, this is the sort of stuff that my buddy Jason Ritchie would be, he'd be dancing circles around this kind of thing and he'd be throwing in all kinds of fancy moves that I can't even conceive of. We're having fun, right? See, the, the key thing is here is the whole part of your mind, your musical mind that normally has to be thinking about, oh, do I play the, like, we're coming up on the four chord, how do I express the chord change? There's no chord changes in this. This is one chord stuff. This is the kind of stuff I used to do as a one-man band when you don't have a guitar player behind you. <laughs> nah, it did not work. Now, one thing you can do, once you, you want a little six degree black belt, you want me to show you one of those moves? All right, pay attention. So, would be to do a riff uh, and, and then to sort of version it so that it's actually messing with the bar line, the implied bar lines of this little thing. Because this little thing after all is like, one, two, three, four, two, two, three. So it's actually a two bar. This is one bar kind of off the three draw bend and one bar off the two draw bend, right? If you count it, da, one, two, three, four, da, 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 two, three, four, da, <laughs> So suppose I kind of messed with, I find some riff. How about this? Let me, let me, this is real time. I'm not going to cut anything. thought I lost my way, but I knew right where I was. I sort of knew that if I came around that last corner, I would be out of the wilderness and back home. <laughs>